Hi, hi, hi everyone! How are you all? I hope we are all in a good condition, right? So, before watching my video, let me introduce myself. My name is Nilo Gerikus Masari with student ID 19130011049. And I came from 3B of Mathematic Education. So, congratulations to see me again. But for this time, I will bring you to different material from Beaver, and namely, application of limits on real life. So, without lingering any longer, let's watch the video. Have a good time for watching! Did you know? Limits is everywhere and all we do has limits. So, what is a limit or what is the definition of limits? If you're still curious, then keep watching this video. I'm sure some of you must know these things are credit card. This object is an object that has a limit or it could be unlimited depending on the policies of each bank. And yes, this thing or internet card has an unlimited quota. And we know that unlimited comes from the word limit. So again, what is the limit? Or what is the definition of limit? In mathematics, a limit is a value that a function or sequence approaches as the input or index approaches same value. Limits are essential to calculus and mathematical analysis in general and are used to define continuity, derivatives, and integrals. Limits can be applied in real life. Everything has a limit in this world that we live in. Some of us are just not aware of it. Real-life limits are used anytime you have some type of real-world application approach to steady-state solution. Such as in the highlands like mountains and rivers and the lowlands like beaches. Like this. Next, we have some examples of real-life application of limits are Speed limit Vehicle capacity Limit of food we intake Limit of using the internet Limit of medicine amount we intake and a lot more in this video you will learn how to evaluate limits and how they are used in one of the basic problems of calculus for example let's see this question if i keep tossing a coin as long as it takes how likely am i to never toss a hat or you can Practice this question like this. Your example of a limit is which is easy to evaluate, but it's still a perfectly reasonable example. Here is Another fairly easy to grasp example of a limit that avoids triviality. Rephrase as a limit problem, we might say, If I toss a coin for n times, remember, for n times, what is the probability of the function of p of n that I have not yet tossed ahead? Now, 
What is the limit as n approaches infinity of p of n? The mathematical answer to this is p of n equal a half to the power of n. Then, the limit of p of n for n approaches infinity equal to zero. Because p equal a half, a quarter, one per eight, one per tenth, and etc. get closer and closer to zero as n gets closer to infinity. Okay, now uh, I want to give you all one practice about that pattern. If I toss a coin for two times, what is the probability of p of two that I have not yet tossed a head? For answer that question, we can replace n by two, and it can be p of two equal a half the power of two. Then the limit of p of two for n approaches infinity equal to a quarter. So the probability p of two that I have not yet tossed a head is a quarter. The next example after toss a coin is speedometer. Okay, uh, when or the reading of your speedometer, for example, 85 km per hour is a limit in the real world. Maybe you think speed is speed, and then why not 85 km per hour? But in fact, speed is changing continuously during the time and the only solid or in other words limitless data you have is that it took you exactly 2 hours to drive the 150 kilometers from A to B. The figure your speedometer gives you is at each instant T0 or T index 0 of your travel the limit. So, the pattern is v of t index 0 equal to limit of the function s of t index 0 minus s of t index 0 minus delta t divided by delta t for delta t approaches 0, where s of t denotes the distance travel up to time t. And next, all of you can see this short video, which is one example of application of limits on real life, especially for chemistry. One example of limit is a chemical reaction started in a beaker in which two different compounds react to form a new compound. Now, as time approaches infinity, the quantity of the new compound form is a limit. Then, 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 look again at the following short video. Yeah, this man put a lot of money in his bag. And maybe this man is so rich. Yeah, he is so rich. And then, one example related to this short video is... A good example is continuous compounding of interest. Suppose that the money in your bank account has an annual interest rate of R and it is compounded n times per year. If you initially had M index 0 or M0 dollars in your account, then after 3 years, your money has grown to M0 or M index 0 times 1 plus r divided by n to the power of n times t. In continuous compounding, your money is compounded every infinitesimal time step. Mm, this is a little non-rigorous, but you can think about it as taking the number of times per year your account is compounded to infinity like this. Limit 
of the function m in x0 times 1 plus r divided by n to the power of n times t for n approaches infinity equal to m in x0 times e to the power of r times t. That's well-known formula for continuous compounding. Yeah, that's all about application of limits on real life. And I deeply apologize if I make some mistake. Thank you for watching. See you again. Goodbye.